Hi guys, Squally here. Welcome to another Transport Fever 2 video. I hope you're loving them still. I'm certainly enjoying making them. There's, there's so much to do. Every time I look at this map, I'm like, I want to do this, I want to do this, I want to... <laughs> I could make a million of these things and you guys will probably love them. Anyway, if you're new or you're just getting in the middle of the series, don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any episodes. And don't forget, hit that notification bell as well because it will actually tell you when a video has gone live. Big shout out to the YouTube members. Thank you so very much for joining. Um, don't forget, join the Discord server. Continue to chat in there. In this episode, actually, let's just refresh. The goal of the whole playthrough series is to get to a billion dollars. We're already halfway there, uh, as I said in the last video. Half a billion dollars. Uh, we are slowing time down to normal now. I'll probably proceed in that vein for a while. Uh, otherwise, we will just make too much money and not get enough done, and the years will tick by. There's plenty of things to do in this game. Uh, once we hit the year 2000, you know, we're, we're going to unlock all kinds of fancy tech that I want to show you. We've not done trams yet. We have not done planes yet. We've only just done one shipping run. Uh, we've not got anywhere near high-speed trains. So there's still plenty of playability. So stick around for the, for the rest of the series. I don't know where it's all going to go. I think it's going to be quite fun, though. In this episode, I want to tackle the problem of emissions. Um, there, are, there is some discussion in the chat about emissions in the comments section. I have noted that and I just want to sort of tackle it head on because we need to understand how emissions work in this game, what effect it has on our cities and what we can do about it and whether or not we should be seriously worried about it. So there's it's a bit of a multifaceted problem this. Actually as I'm talking here I'm just noticing something. <laughs> I'm just noticing something. A big queue of uh, trucks though would probably benefit from a bit of destruction. Four buildings removed. Let's go. Um, I suspect, let me just check which route they're bringing in. Okay, they're coming in that way. Yeah, all right. Let's, let's just do that. Um, costs a bit of citizen numbers and things, but they'll grow back. This city's on the up. Right. Emissions. What are they? Uh, when, I, when this sign pops up saying, oh, the condition of multiple vehicles is really bad, what does that mean? Well, if you click down here on the vehicle stats, uh, you can see the condition of a vehicle. And it shows you can sort by condition. Basically, you can see a lot of the, you know, a lot of the, well, that's not sorted. A lot of the condition of the vehicles is um, pretty good. But you can see a lot of them are very bad. Uh, if you click on a vehicle and go to details, it will, it will tell you it's very bad. It's 17 years old. Some of the age of our vehicles uh, now are 29 years old. It's 1964, like, I mean, okay, you know, buses can run for 10, 20 years, but I mean, this this is this is ancient, right? We shouldn't even be rocking this thing anymore. But what effect does it have um, on the on, on our city by running a, a bus for so long? Um, that's what we're going to work out today. You may also wonder. I don't know if some of you questioned this, but when I put this road in here, you may I I wonder if some of you thought, why didn't you just come straight in here? Why, why didn't you go over here? Why did you do that? There was a good reason why I did that. And it's something that I didn't really do on any, any of the other cities. Um, but I kind of did it so that I could show you something now. The reason I did that is because of emissions. The only thing... Now, let me just start off by saying emissions in this game are quite... Um, they're not an amazing thing. Uh, they're kind of crudely implemented. A bit of an afterthought. Not very well developed. Um, if you click on a city and look here at emissions, it will show you that the, it's mediocre, rating from very poor to very good. Average emission reaching a citizen building, 65. That's, the clue is right there, reaching a residential building, right? Emissions only affect the residential areas. It's only residents that care about it. Industrial zones and commercial zones don't care. They've got their own emissions to deal with, but people do. Like, people really do. If you click on this thing, the land use layer, it will show you where your housing is. And every city is different because it depends how it develops. In this particular one, you can see that Princess Risborough, which is quite a new town, is a bit of a mix between yellow industrial, blue commercial on the right side, and residential on the left side. And that will quite likely to continue to grow in that way. They will probably punch out its resident this way and commercial will, will tend to come this way as you can see they're already building up that hill now what that means is if you've got noisy old polluting trucks and buses and trains and all that kind of thing 
If they are going anywhere near or through a residential area, they will have an effect on the city's emissions. And the penalty is this. The penalty is residents. If you hover over it, it's causing a suppression in growth on the city of 52 residents. Now, it's not a huge amount, but 52 residents out of nearly 400 is, well, mental maths about, what, 15%, something like that. It's not insignificant, but it's not massively significant. However, the reason I built this road down here was because of exactly that. I realized that, you know, we had to bring trucks all the way down here with food, and food will always need to be dropped off in commercial districts. That's just the way the game works. If you click on the cargo icon here, it neatly demonstrates that food is always dropped off in the blue commercial zones, right? So I know I've got to get trucks down here. I've got to get them into a commercial zone. If I can not drive through a residential area, then that's a good thing because I can run really old trucks, the noisy polluting ones, and they won't care because they're not anywhere near them. They're only ever coming into the commercial district. And that's why I built the road here. If I'd have connected it through there, they would have driven all the way through this housing to get there. And that would have caused probably a minus 30 or even 40% on the city, which is, you know, a big number. Now, the way to view emissions is to click on this bottom one here, keypad 9, if you've got a numeric keypad, keypad 9. This neatly shows you what is going on uh, in emissions in your city. Now, obviously, the trucks are generating pollution. Uh, trains will generate pollution. Even the ships there are generating pollution, but ships are never really a problem because they don't go through residential areas ever unless you've smashed a massive canal right through the middle of your city, in which case, good luck to you. Um, but normally, you know, even trains, if you keep them outside of the city, they're very rarely a problem. You can see our trains are coming in here and they don't really bother Aylsham. You can see the emissions, but it doesn't matter because it doesn't affect the housing. If we go to Elsham and have a look at the district here, uh, once again, you see industrial, commercial. Most of the noise is in the commercial industrial sector and there's not a lot going on in the residential area. And as a result, it's only minus 20%. That works really well. However, if we go and look at one of our older cities, shall we say, Romsey is a good example. Romsey's pretty bad. Romsey's got minus 40% emissions. Why is that? Well, it just so happens that the way Romsey has developed it's developed a rather large residential area and it really doesn't help that we've got this massive road coming right into it and this massive road is full of uh, private traffic as it happens which has an unknown effect on the emissions of the city it, it, it definitely has an effect but it's not something we can really control directly unless we delete that road and just stop them from coming in that way which is something we can do but Really, what you want to do is reduce the amount of private transport. Just don't have them doing it. Try to get them to get on your public transport. The fewer private transport journeys that are go through residential, the better. The other thing to consider, therefore, is, well, you're probably thinking, well, hang on a minute. We need to have public transport going through residential areas. We need buses and trams. We need to move people around. And you're absolutely right. So what can we do about that? Well, let's have a look at the buses that are coming right through our residential block right now. Here's a bus. It's in very bad condition. It's 30 years old. It's chucking out emissions, right? Because it's in very bad condition, it's having a contributory effect. As it drives around this residential area, it causes a problem for Romsey. And we need to keep on top of that. Now, one obvious thing is to just, when it gets too old, replace it. Just just swap the thing out. And that's a thing that you can do. There's no doubt about it. The other thing you can do is change the maintenance of the vehicle. So if you go to manage vehicles, let's say that this is a bus that we want to keep. And, and, and it's not because I'm going to replace these. So the simple option, let's just show you. Option A is this. The bus is really old and rubbish. And the thing to do is to just come in, find a much more modern thing. Let's say, you know, this is currently that one doing 35Ks, 11 people. This one can do 50Ks with 10 people. This one could even do 70Ks with 14 people. Much quicker, much more efficient, more people. 1.4 million, done, sold, right? So now what you've got is buses that are 
in very good condition so they don't cause much in the way of emissions. But you give it 10, 15 years and they'll start to degrade and they'll start to cause an emission problem. What can you do then? Well, let's go and have a look at Lee. So Lee's residential area is over on the west side. And the first thing when you sort of look at this is, well, you think, well, hang on, you haven't even got a bus stop here. So because the city's grown, and I did say to you many episodes ago, this would happen, our bus routes will become complete nonsense because the city explodes and our bus routes haven't changed and we need to do a refresher on this. And that is absolutely something that we need to do. But just in terms of emissions, we can see that they're also in very bad condition, been running for 19 years. Let's say we didn't want to replace these. What we can do is we can change the, the maintenance schedule. So if we click on this little cog with a dollar in it, you can click this and you can basically pay more money in maintenance costs and it will improve the condition of the vehicle. What actually happens is this. If you leave this on normal, you will pay, if you look in the details tab, the running costs, which are 20 grand a year. You'll pay normal running costs. If you change this, if you increase the maintenance of the running costs to high, it will increase the maintenance cost by 25%. So that means it will cost you another five grand a year on top of this bus's running cost. But the condition of the vehicle will improve. So under normal circumstances, the lowest condition it can ever get to is very bad, which is the worst, right? If you put it on high, the lowest condition it will ever get to is mediocre, which is not bad. For an extra five grand a year, it becomes mediocre. And if you put it on very high, which adds 50%, so another 10 grand a year for that bus alone, times five, that's, that's, that's you know, 50 grand a year extra in costs, the minimum it will get to is very high, I think. I think it's very high. So very, basically the way it goes is very bad, mediocre, very high. If you are prepared to pay that money, it will always be in the very high category. It will chuck out the minimum emissions it can. So really what you want to look at as well is the line finance. Yeah, because this line is already costing nearly 100 grand a year and we're only getting back 50. If we improve the maintenance on this and boost it like 50%, we're going to be chucking out nearly 150k a year and we're getting 50 back. So we're losing 100 grand a year. But it will reduce the emissions in the city. You know, it will bring this number down. And that means more people will move in and therefore more people will get on the bus and you'll make more money. So it's always a trade-off. So to sum up, there are different ways of tackling the emissions problem. One is to have a look at your road network and consider, you know, maybe maybe don't have this road coming into the residential area or maybe change the way the lanes are routed, like this, this purple line here, which is our Lee to Romsey buses. This is the bus network that goes straight from Romsey to Lee. And what it does is it drives right through the middle of this residential area, causing pollution. So maybe those buses on the Romsey line there, because they're making good money. Yeah, they're making great money. So let's just manage those vehicles and say, you know what? That's worth doing that. That's worth changing. It's worth spending extra money because we're making the money and we don't want to cause pollution all the way down that road. And there's no more efficient way of getting them there than straight through the high street. But what you'll notice now over time is these can, we'll just leave that there for a second. The condition will start to, um, to change. I'll speed it up and see if it works for you. But on this other bus network, I might go, nah, it's not worth spending the money. What I'll do is I'll just reconfigure them and go somewhere else. Let these buses perhaps pick up the residential coming through because they're we're spending extra money. Or, you know, another another way of reducing pollution is to look at how many people are getting on the private transport network, like this lot here. There's a lot of people coming in down that road. Where are they going? Well, lots of them are coming through here. Yeah, this is residential areas. There's a lot of private transport going through our residence area. Let's have a look at replacing that with a public transport network because we don't have one. There's clearly demand for it. Let's get them out of town, out of their cars, and let's move them by a train. Great thing to do. It's another way of reducing emissions. So I would say, that, and the last thing to understand is that it only affects res residential. So when you see a pop-up saying the condition of vehicles is poor, if that's like a truck, 
that is, you know, shifting oil across your network, it doesn't matter. The emissions do not matter because it's not going through a resident area. So just bear it in mind. For most things, you can ignore the emissions on it. You can completely ignore it. You don't need to crank up the maintenance for most things. But it is worth mentioning one last thing, and that is, you see the dirt on this bus? If you don't like the fact that your vehicles look dirty, it's because of the condition of them. You know, if you want to throw money at the problem and have them lovely and clean, you need to spend an extra 50%. But practically speaking, it only matters when they go through residential areas. Otherwise, ignore it. Just completely ignore it. For all your trains that are moving crude around and oil around and combat around, like all this lot over here, there is absolutely no point in changing the uh, maintenance of these trains because they never go anywhere near, as you'll see if you go to emissions there, they never go anywhere near as residential area. Yeah, so nobody cares. So now you've got all the facts, <laughs> now we can start to fix a few problems, right? Because as we just noticed, there's already demand on the network that we're not supplying. So for example, let's have a look at Loughton, right? Loughton is on minus 40% emissions. And part of the reason for it is to do with what's being moved around the network. Um, our buses, right? Our buses are here, 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 and here. Little bus stop there on like a little inner circuit. And then they go off to this bus station and this bus station connects to a train station, but the train station doesn't actually take them anywhere. Yeah, we built this train station with the future in mind that at some point we could put a train line between Thatcham and Loughton. Well, we kind of need to do that, but also we need to evaluate, well, this bus stop here, if you look at the catchment area, it's picking up bottom right corner. Not bad. That one there, just about got between them just about got the bottom half of the city covered so i think we're okay on that front our next bus stop is over here so between that one and that one i don't think we're hitting all this over on the west side we're not quite getting there we could perhaps do with another bus stop over here somewhere just to pick all of that up on the east side we don't really have enough problem yet because but as they grow out we will have a problem and then there's the north side which you know i would suggest we probably need another bus stop up here somewhere you will need to spend time, as I do, just going around every city saying, hang on, this has exploded. I need to reconfigure my bus network. And whenever I do that, I need to start thinking about, well, given the route that my buses are taking, are they getting stuck in traffic? Are my trucks getting stuck in traffic? Uh, you know, if anything's getting stuck in traffic, it will absolutely cost you money. So you need to upgrade roads. But in this instance, if I look at the transport people are taking, I can see... 50 odd people are going down this road here and they're going straight down. Well, it's hard to say which way they're going exactly, but it's most likely they're going to Thatcham because anybody going to Mablethorpe is going this way. You can see the super high demand here, super high demand. 100 people want to go to Mablethorpe or are going to Mablethorpe. And now we've just got a load of trucks, dump trucks, tank, uh, tank trucks and tarpaulin. So we could pretty much upgrade any of our trucks right now and possibly get higher capacity. So a quick look at them. Cargo. Okay. So 21 capacity as opposed to 13. So yeah, we, we pretty much need to upgrade most of our vehicles. Um, that's one of those things where you slow it down or pause it and then just go around your network and figure it out and upgrade all your trucks. Well, let's just stay on target for this. What I want to do now is create a train link between Mablethorpe and Loughton because there's a huge demand for it and we need to get people off that road because they're just driving in right through the middle they're coming in through here which is commercial but I bet you I bet you out of all those journeys yeah loads are going down this way so that's 69 70 loads are coming this way loads are coming that way and that's absolutely getting into the residential bit also there's money to be made so how do we do it well we have a train station here we're already dropping them off at the bus station so we can expand this platform. Going to be a bit tricky to make a turn out of there. It's doable. You know, it'll be a sharp turn, but we could definitely do it. The question is, like, what's the elevation difference? Because we can see a lot of hills here. So what you can do 
is if you go to your contour tab, which is the first one there, keypad one, if you hover over this platform, you notice this bit here, a high tech cursor, 56 meters. So that platform is 56 meters from sea level effectively. And if we go down here, that one's 31 meters. So that's not bad. We've got like a 20 meter climb. It could have been a lot worse, but we're gonna have to tunnel through this hill. Also, if we go that way, we can tunnel through there. We can delete this road. We don't need this road. Um, although that is a main road connection for them at the moment. Yep. So it won't like us deleting that road, but we'll have to just tunnel it or something. We want to come out of here and go through there. We need to go through this road that we built. And we need to drop into this platform here. And then we'll need a bus station and a bunch of platforms so that it can continue... Uh, we can hook into this city. We don't have, we have a bus station here, but we don't have one for this. The alternative is to come in perhaps that way and slam straight into this station here, which, oh, get this road, <laughs> which we could do. We could, and that would have the advantage of hitting our existing infrastructure. Um, it's a bit of a loop. We could even come out this way and go that way. We could come, you know, the long way that way or that way. I would suggest probably going that way. There's going to be a heck of a lot of tunnel, but I think it's the best thing to do. And if we have a look at the elevation on that one, this platform is at 55 meters. So yeah, it's about the same as that one. I think that's what we'll do. We'll reconfigure this. We'll add some more platforms here first. So we'll go to configure and we'll, oh, we've got the J slab unlocked. You may wonder what J slab is. J slab is it's cosmetic. It doesn't affect the speed of the track, but it is like a Japanese high speed rail style. Um, the annoying thing is it is a mod. The annoying thing is it always now appears in front of these, <laughs> which is, is a bit frustrating. Uh, we will upgrade this to high speed. We'll go straight in there because we're going to do passages with this. Uh, so when we get fast trains, we we can out you know straight out the door. We'll be doing fast trains on the fast track when we can get there, but it won't be for a while. So that will give us an extra two to go in. We may have to delete this road. Uh, it may complain. Well, let's just do that now. It may get interesting otherwise. Um, we're going to come out of there and then we're going to swing around this way. This is going to be interesting to say the least. Now this platform here currently has, I don't think, I didn't actually add the PAX hub to it. So what we need to do is we need to go to configure. We need, hang on a second, I've clicked on the wrong thing. This station here, that's better. We go to passenger buildings and we'll put the passenger terminal. Oh, you see, it's getting awkward. For some reason, it it's going to hit that road, you see, because it's so big. So what we might have to do is do the smaller version. So we'll go down a level to this size. Yeah, that's fine. So we'll do that. And we'll put like two little ones maybe. And if we can squeeze another one of them, that'll look nice. Perfect. Then we'll go with track. Now they've got two track in there. No, they've got one track in there. Okay, that's interesting. So, hmm. Do we want another track? Okay, so we'll put what we'll do. I want to make sure we've got an extra cargo platform later just for you know future possibilities so let's go with an extra cargo then we'll put in a passenger platform there. and then we'll put in a high speed track there like that and that's pretty much all we can do what we can then do is you can add these, they're more cosmetic than anything else. They kind of come in a bit later. Um, but they're basically a, a cosmetic way of taking... You know, packs will just appear out of here, effectively. Uh, they'll come in through here, and then they'll come out of these little things. And if you have more than one passenger platform, you can see them move between them. It's, it's kind of cool. Also, you've got these platform roof now. Again, just cosmetic. You know, they don't really do anything, but they are pretty nice to have, I think. So then we'll do that. And then what I want to do is just grab the flatten tool and just flatten that out a little bit. Bring the strength down, just smooth it a touch. There we go. 
just so it didn't look like it was cut out the side of a hill. Now, the next thing we need to do is just make sure this is connected to the road, because this one is, uh, but this one isn't. So if we, if we didn't connect that to the road, it could be an issue, although I think it will take that one anyway. But I think now might be the opportunity to just upgrade this road. So we'll just pause it a second. Um, let's just see. We've got an in and out there. We are going to have... Yeah, we've got high speed coming down here, haven't we? Yeah, this road should be bigger. Um, we're just going to upgrade the whole road, I think. Take the opportunity to make it a bit wider. So we'll delete this lot here. The game's going to complain massively. But we need to do it. So we'll just delete like that. We'll get rid of these one ways. Um, and then we'll get rid of that for now and what we'll do is we'll come in with a non-residential road so we'll go like that we'll have a bus lane and we'll just see if the game will let us squeeze this in it's a bit of a tight squeeze but i think we can do it there we go so if we build that it's building out to about here say like that and then we just need to come past there. It's about there. And then we'll curve it a bit. Like that. And then at this point, we can switch back to the town road because we don't mind them building on this bit. Like that. And then we could even be nice and friendly and connect in like that. And then turn the lights off. There we go. Right, so the last thing to do is just put back the road network. So we need to have the one-way road coming in here. We need to have it going out like that. That looks, that looks significantly funky, doesn't it? <laughs> Maybe we'll do it that way. Right, exit there. Input here. Um, we can get rid of all these lights because we don't want them. And then the last bit is this tiny bit of road, which we need to make sure we reconnect. Otherwise, this industry won't be properly connected. And then, before we unpause it, just double-check everything. So, click on this. And we can see that is lit up by all of those. That is connected to that. That's connected. All looks good to me. Check your line routes. All good. No errors up there. Unpause. Done. Right. So, now we have... Passengers being dropped off here, and while we're here, let's just upgrade these buses because they are ancient, and I'd like to have something a bit quicker. So we'll slam those in like that. So we get people over here nice and quickly. We've got plenty of platforms, so we just need to work out how we're going to make that loop back around there. This is definitely going to be interesting. Um, this road here, we might have to tunnel. So what I'll do is I'll pause it. We'll just delete this road here like that. Now the game didn't actually complain about that, which is very, very interesting. Because I think it's because it can connect to this. That's actually interesting, because there's a lot of journeys going down that road. I thought it would complain, but it didn't. Anyway, we'll go for the uh, track. Um, where's the track gone? The, that one. We'll go for this one. Now let's take the inside this is the first inside platform, but because that's a cargo, this is the first PAX platform. So we'll grab that inside one. And we'll have a think about... It's 100 miles an hour. That's not a bad... I thought that would be a lot worse, to be honest. Uh, we'll do that to the... Because we do need to elevate anyway. So, it's you know, if we're already going slowly because of the curve, we might as well get some of the climb out of the way. Because we know we've got to go like what's it 20 meters or something so we'll get some of that climb done here um like so so it's slowing down because of the hill and it has to slow down because of the curve uh, the important thing is we get the speed later should see the curve let's see if we go up here I mean, the problem is it is going to stop the town building in this direction, but I think they can go this way and this way. Um, although that track is limiting them. So yeah, this Loughton's going to have to build that way and this way, I think. This is going to be the main area. But it should be fine. So we'll build that now, because we're kind of pointing in the right direction. 
we'll go over here and we just need to reconfigure oh no we don't we've already done it we just need to think about then how it will come through here so what we'll do is we'll take this and we'll flatten some of that road there like that and we'll just smooth that out so i'm thinking we have like a piece of track somewhere here running alongside because i like it when you get um rail track running alongside of a road it looks kind of cool so we'll do that and then having built that we will let's see we've already got that's a pax line isn't it so we'll go on the inside track so we'll connect that through to there like that that gives it a speed of 146 as it makes that turn um maybe we can do slightly better than that if we get rid of a couple of pieces let's try that okay that's more like it so that's 205 now that's better because later on when this is a high speed line you know we don't want things slowing down too much uh so we'll go with that but we'll change that tunnel to something a little bit more modern punch that in and then we need to try and figure out how to get from here so let's just see what it looks like if we do that so if we built that as it is we will have a 300k run there. there's no way they'll get even the fastest trains will not get to this speed it, it's just not a long enough run so don't sweat it too much like they take probably half of this map just to get anywhere near 250 so it's not ever really going to be a problem what we need to configure though is whatever um we want to do in terms of bridge we don't have a lot of options yet so maybe we'll just make that a rustic one or a, i don't like the silver one it doesn't look good that looks old school that tends to camo so i like that one we'll go dark green there for this we'll make the high speed tunnel entrance and other than that for 3.2 million i think the job is a good one uh, so then we'll quickly zoom in and just have a look at this stuff here. You may want to smooth this out. It's up to you whether you want to have it aggressively cutting into the landscape. Um, it's pure style, nothing else. But that will bring us into there, and then that will come down to here. Let's try and make that a little bit smoother. There we go. And the last thing we want to do is have a second track coming in. make sure um, the track sticks to the adjacent one sometimes like I said in the last episode sometimes when you go through too many tunnels it will get confused and disconnect oh I've got the wrong side never mind uh, let's just cancel that and we'll bring that back and have it go through that There we go. And then we'll just bring that out. Join them up. And then we'll do... Now, diamonds and tunnels are, are interesting. So, like, you can do a diamond in a tunnel, but diamond on a tunnel entrance... Uh, it, it's not really a thing, you see. It's not loving that. And if I try to do it coming back the other way, it tends not to work. So, the option that I usually go for is either have your tunnel further back here and do your diamond or just do your diamond in the tunnel. It's slightly more tricky because it doesn't really show you what's going on. You can see, it's like... You, know. <laughs> you can do that. Um, yeah, it's a bit of a mess. So what I think I would do in this instance is I would delete that track and push the tunnel back a little bit by effectively flattening the ground oops wrong one flattening the ground here just to give us a bit more leeway uh obviously this this road's on a cliff edge so i'll probably just you know bring it up like that and then smooth it and then we'll go for the road and what uh, so the track and what should happen is 
we will have enough section to do the diamond. Like that. I don't know why. It just doesn't like it doing on tunnel entrances. It, it hates it. But I quite like this landscape tunnel entrance. I'm not too happy about that bit of road. Um, kind of looks awkward, doesn't it? I mean, I think the AI's developed this. What I might do is just trash that so that it doesn't build it and possibly do something like... Even that's nasty. I mean, it's pure aesthetics. It absolutely makes no difference, but I think, you know, that looks a little bit nicer uh, than what it was before. Could smooth that out there, smooth that out here. Could even flat that out a bit more. You know, whatever. It's your city, build it how you want. <laughs> so we've got our double track all the way in, and we can un. Can we unpause it yet? No, let's fix this road before we unpause it. Smooth that out. So this is a piece of road that is not strictly needed according to the game. So what we'll do is we'll have it as a small country road and we will tunnel it down. I don't think we need to make this connection, but I'll do it anyway. Um, but what I might do is... Hmm, it's going to bring it in. Let's perhaps get rid of that. And then we'll tunnel it under here. Three hundred twenty-six grand. Raise it up slightly like that. So we're just going to go underneath the track, um, perhaps to the, just to keep that connection going, and then we'll smooth that out a bit. You know, just because I know the game has got a lot of people going down that road, which hopefully will replace, but. We didn't need to do that. Anyway, this bit here is going to be a tricky diamond, I think. I don't know if it's going to let... The curvature is so high um, that it tends to go one way, but not the other. But somehow I've mystically done it. And then the next thing to do is think about where the um, depot will go. We've got a connection to here. I think we can unpause it now because we've not trashed any other roads. So I think we're good to go again. Uh, so where will the depot go? Well, we could put it perhaps here um, we could have it over here I don't think so though perhaps we could feed it in from there well out of town so maybe we just go like something like this drop a depot in and we'll just you know plonk it right out here where we're unlikely to do anything else and then bring in the connection to that one the only problem with that is it then limits the use of that one, doesn't it? I don't like that. Tell you what, what we'll do is we'll flatten this ground here. And we'll drop the depot in here. And we'll just feed, the, feed them in that way. We'll do that. Easy. Right, last thing to do is signalling. So we'll get our signalling thing out. Go with one way. We shall put one down just before, or just here actually, and then we'll do one at the join, one after the join. That should put them all the way along the length. And then we go to the last one, and we come. Make sure you got the arrow pointing back the right way. That should mirror them all the way along, and then just look at the diamond. We'll put one there, and then we'll put uh, no for that. Put it like that. So that won't be 400 meters, but it's a good distance. Uh, and then finally, we just need to come back to here and put one up. And that's the signaling done. We know the bus network comes into here. If we come over this side, we know there's a bus network feeding the city that possibly needs to be updated. But for now, we're just going to stick a train line on there. So this is going to be Loughton to Mablethorpe. I reckon this line's going to do well. So, Loughton, Mabel, Thorpe, Axe. Q 
Give it a nice green color. We'll go from the passenger platform here to the passenger platform there. Make it a slightly darker color so we can see it against this other green one. And then I'll just, I think for this one, we just put the little, um, these little packs things. How are they doing financially? Yeah, I mean, they're making decent money. We could stick some of them on or we can configure a train. Either, either or. Let's have a look. Build vehicle. So either we can go for... I've actually got a diesel multiple unit now. Look at that. A rail bus that does 90Ks. 15 passengers, 90K. Interesting. That is 125K. 20, 20 capacity. Um, electric... Yeah, the problem is, like, it's the cost, isn't it? Because these things are, like, 2.7 million with half a million running cost. If you try and do that with any locomotive, 12.6 with a $2 million running cost. It's just a massive. I think we just stick a bunch of these on. Um, you can, of course, double them up if you want to. I reckon we can probably run... We had 100 on that road, didn't we? So that would give you capacity of 40. And then we could perhaps have... Three or perhaps four. I think three might be enough for that distance. Uh, we'll colour them a dark green colour. And we'll assign them on that line. And we will see what happens. It'll take a little bit of time for the line to establish because the... The passengers in Loughton will start to realise that they can get from here to Mablethorpe um, via the... The private, there you can see this number's going up already. Um, so that will definitely take packs, hopefully, off this existing thing here. That I'm hoping to see that number come down, if anything. 102, it's starting to bleed downwards a little bit, but we'll check on it later and see how it's getting on. Where's the actual train? There it is. They look cool. I think when you get double multiple units like that, they start to look pretty cool, don't they? That's got a great capacity, though. The question is... Oh, we've got a passenger. Look at that. Look at that. The good thing about this is that packs can now get from Loughton to Thatcham. Yeah? Because they can take the train here, switch line, take the train here. So now they don't have to go down this slow, clunky country road. So in theory, it should also start to reduce the packs on this. That was at 50. Maybe it will go down. I don't know. We'll have to see. That's definitely gone down. Look, that's got down 10 straight away. So more people are definitely uh, getting on private transport. That's great. Look, big numbers. Fantastic. Hopefully that line will also make some money. What we'll do now is quickly have a look at Mablethorpe because I can see a, a problem. Uh, Mablethorpe buses here. I can see a problem with lots and lots and lots of people standing at this platform. Um, which makes me wonder why. Why that platform? Um, but also, why have we got really old buses? What is the bus route look like? Uh, can we improve it? And the answer is yes, we can. Um, by the way, some of you have suggested trams. Now, remember the discussion earlier about about emissions. I just want to quickly show you something. If I drop down a tram depot, and if I open up a standard vehicle, so a, a passenger bus like, let's say the Mercedes-Benz, right? It does 70 kilometers an hour. It does has a capacity of 14. Its emission is 73. 73. If I go to a tram, and the fastest tram I can currently get is 60, and it has an emission of 68. Not 73, 68. So don't think, oh, if I go with electric trams, I'm going to have no emissions. That's not the case. Yes, a diesel bus spews out diesel on your roads. An electric tram has no emissions. But the game doesn't work it that way. The game goes, well, this is making still a lot of noise and, you know, etc. This number is what matters. It's almost as bad as a bus. So don't think swapping buses for trams is going to suddenly save your emission problem. Because it won't. It simply won't. It'll have just as bad emissions, really. Um, but, you know, it can look cool. So that's a different reason. Let me just double check what's going on. So, I think this bus route here. That's a road that we don't use. It's not a great way into the bus station, is it? I think we can probably do better than this. 
I think what we might do is first of all just upgrade this road here so it's nice and wide um, so that will be a little bit invasive but we'll do that and we'll have a look at the bus routing which is obviously this way so we'll make sure our buses are able to move around because the PAX numbers are going to go up now this is this is expensive. You can see some big buildings are being destroyed, but I sound like a parrot now. It's for your own good. <laughs> it's for your own good, city. We're doing it for you. You'll thank me later. Um, yeah, okay. So it goes that way. Currently goes that way and then that way. Personally, I think I'd rather it go this way, maybe. Just go through there. It's a lot of zigzag, and every time they zigzag, they sort of slow down, so... Eight buildings removed, I don't like the idea of that. We'll have to go that way. Oh, God. Can't get away from it, can we? Um, we'll move this bus stop to here. It's almost the same place. But it means it can go down that faster road, so we'll go... It's just Springfield 2, you can go there. And that'll get rid of Springfield 2. Uh, and we'll get rid of that stop. So now it's going to go this way. Which is a fast way. However, why do we need this connection? What's that for? Well, we've got vehicles coming in. Hmm. You get In this game, you get this combination of you build a lot of roads and then the game just does what it wants and connects things in odd ways. And that's pretty much what's happening. Like, I really don't feel the need to have that road. So we'll get rid of it. Um, but the bus is now going via the fast method. The only question then is, are they capturing most of our city? And I think they are. And now we've flushed that out. I think we've got rid of the traffic problem there. But what we haven't done is replace all these vehicles with something nice and quick. High capacity. And that should help to move people from Mablethorpe to and from the station and then over here we've got Loughton which we've already upgraded the buses for uh, so that's taken care of the only question is what does their routing look like and it's the pink one here isn't it so yeah there's, there's work to be done here as well effectively we've got truck stops going on got quite a few truck stops going on here this is not good, is it? Look. They're basically coming right through these horrible roads. And this is all residence area as well, so... Why are they dropping off stuff? I'm trying to remember what we did here. Now, the food, okay. Oh, that's commercial, that's not residential. Ah, okay. Actually, this is in the wrong place, look. This is classic expansionistic problem. What we need to do, because th this is like here, and we actually want to be capturing all of that, so we'll just get rid of this a second. So instead of being here, we're already missing out the top part in terms of food. So if we can get a nice fast bus route through there, we can probably just drop there, can't we? Like that. So we'll just edit that line and say, you know what? Don't go there anymore. We want you to go here. And then get rid of Vic Victoria Street like that. And then we'll upgrade some roads. So make sure you're on the, the one with trees. And then we can say... Right, straight through there. Construction not possible. Right, the reason construction isn't possible here is because of the amount of junctions that's going on. Uh, there is only one way to fix this, and that's delete one of the roads. It can't upgrade this because of this road connection and this road connection in close proximity. So if I have a look at this, the easiest way to fix the problem is to delete that. But that look how messy that is. 600,000, 1.2 million. It's, it's a big problem. What we'll do is we'll get rid of that one. And then we'll upgrade that one. And then we should have connections coming that way. Okay. I think it would be better if it if we upgraded this like 
that. And then, yeah, you see how it rerouted it? Rather than sort of zigzagging your way through the countryside, which is what it'll do by default, if you give it faster, better roads, it will naturally try and take them. Um, but I am noticing a road here that's, you know, it's taking, it's, it's going like this and like that. I think it would be easier if it just went that way. Which it's not doing, but if we trash that road, it will. <laughs> Sometimes you have to give the AI a bit of a slap and say, nope, that's stupid. Do it this way. It's like the way that truck's going through there, like, you know. Anyway, that's bringing more people down to the PAX platform. Which should hopefully mean that we'll start earning a bit of money off this at some point, because right now the finances are going to suck. But we've had a bit of an impact on this. Not significant yet, but I think we can do better. Those numbers should improve over time. We have massively run out of time. In this episode, we've had a huge discussion about emissions. It's been quite a long one, but I hope you've got a much better understanding about how emissions work. Uh, what I need to do and what you need to do with your cities is go around and do what we've just done with these two. And that is look at your bus stops, look at your roads, do some maintenance, spend like half an hour, an hour, just go around and make sure everything's, you know, functioning. I will do that. I won't bore you with the details. You've seen how we do it and what we do. I will refresh the cities now and make sure that the bus loops are all good and the road network is fine. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video, guys. Until the next one, take care. Happy transporting.